What's going on guys and welcome back to another video I'm over at DSR, that's Zoe We're back at Riders taking out some Harleys I'm taking out this Harley Davidson breakout No messing about, let's get into it Let's start this video off then talking about the engine inside this breakout We've got Harley Davidson's V-Twin Milwaukee 8 117 engine And what does that mean to the rest of us? It has got a CC of 1,923. With a Harley though, it's not about the CC engine, it's about the torque, and this has got a whopping 168 newton meters of torque. That's a lot, that is a lot, because in comparison to the horsepower, this is only pushing out 102 brake horsepower. So as you can see, the, uh, the stats don't lie. And it's got a lot of torque, and what does that mean? Just get past this roundabout. And what that means is this. What it means is that every gear down low all the way up through the rev range is this thing pulls like a freight train. In my eyes, Harley have kind of got two different ranges. They've got their traditional classic cruisers, which is this and many other bikes that they've got, which has very little tech. It's kind of just a raw bike. And then there's the other side, which is their Pan Ams, and it's got their, their baggers with the, the sat navs and the speakers and the extra technology involved. You kind of decide when you're looking at Harley, what do you want? Do you want just the natural old school feel of a cruiser where it's just you, the bike, and an awesome engine? Or do you want the baggers of the screen and a bit more technology? I say that because when you start looking at the electronics on this bike, <laughs> there's pretty much nothing. When I say that is, yeah, we do have LEDs all around. We've got this absolutely tiny, probably two inch LCD screen. There is ABS and then there's optional traction control. And that's it. No rider modes, no other fancy gizmos. I take it back. I apologise when I say no other fancy gizmos. This one does actually have cruise control. So, this bike, on this breakout, they've put cruise control. I say it's nice to see, but, uh, ah. I'm not particularly going to be doing long distance on this style bike. This, for me, is your Sunday ride bike. A couple of hours, no more. The breakout is an expensive Harley. For that, it is just over £24,000. And there are four different color options. We've got the vivid black, which is this one. You've also then got the black and gray, Baja orange, and the silver. And those other three options are gonna add an extra £440 onto your total price. For me though, I love this, I love the black. For 2023, they have added a lot of chrome onto the breakout and uh, I'll show you that when we pull over do a little walk around and a sound test but the vivid black with the chrome looks lovely Zoe is out today on the sport glide as you can see both these videos will be dropping soon but this morning we are on these and this afternoon we're out Ducatis she's looking good me and Zoe were at the NEC Birmingham last year and she sat on the Sport Glide. Back then she loved it, so I'm glad today she managed to get out on it. And through her visor I can tell she is smiling. So it looks like a Harley might be on the cards at some point. Listen to that engine. Even though the LCD screen provided is tiny, it shows what I need. We've got the speed, the gear, my fuel, and my total mileage. What more do you need? It's nice to see it up here on the handlebars because I can clearly see it when I am riding. My fat bob had it down here on the tank and I had to take my vision off the road to kind of look down at it. And then not only that is the fat bob one used to steam up. Looking down between our legs then, we do have this pretty big tank. This tank is going to hold 19 litres. That's going to get you a solid 150, 180 miles per tank. Those 19 litres do add a few kilos to the weight, which the weight of this is coming in at 310 kilos. It's not like, even with that 310 kilo weight, 
you kind of don't feel it like it's got a big 240 rear tire so it is kind of sluggish on the turns but you don't feel the weight i think it's more to do with the the tire profile to be honest looking at the handlebars then all pretty simple left hand side we've got a trip button horn high and low beams for harley the indicators are on the left and right side of the handlebars and then we've got the uh, cruise control on the bottom left as well just down here the harley does have what we call the forward riding position so the foot pegs are quite far in front of your knee and it kind of puts you in like a bit of a v-shaped position with your body what i do find the handlebar is a little bit far forward so i'm having to kind of stretch a little bit so after a couple of hours of riding i'm definitely going to feel a bit of strain on my back obviously something to negate that would be just getting bar risers just to bring the handlebars towards you slightly or i know harley has a vast catalogue of parts that you can change their bikes that's kind of the beauty of harleys not one harley is the same once they uh, the owners start to customize it and you can then get different size handlebars as well different shape handlebars so if you don't want to put risers on you can just change the bars out completely there is no wind protection for this bike and 60 miles an hour there's no dramas when you start getting above that you do have to put a lot of strain a lot of effort uh to trying to hold on to the handlebars through your top half but when you're in sixth gear the vibrations aren't too bad you will find if you're in the lower gears in the uh higher rev range there is there is some vibrations but not as bad as the older generation harleys that's for sure I'm starting to find with this seat uh, the star of this seat kind of does sit on my, my coxit in the back of my bum obviously some of the vibrations are starting to go through there a little bit and also just the weight of the way I'm sitting is kind of putting pressure onto the area so potentially looking at a different seat would be an option for me if I was to get this bike so I've pulled over now let's have a little walk around of this bike and as you can see before we even start moving look at all the chrome on the 2023 model it looks nice could be a pain to uh, keep clean and shiny but hey it's harley up front we have got this massive 21 inch front wheel lovely rims i really like the spokes on those we have only got single disc and single four pot piston caliper at the front so the braking power isn't the best because there's a lot of weight to this bike and then we come to the rear and then we've got a massive 240 profile tire and the same spokes as well chrome all over this thing engine casing air filter the works the breakout does have this air filter that sticks out uh, i have found so far that my knee does hit it when i am riding with the forward foot pegs actually the, the foot pegs are just there you can change that for a low profile air filter if you find it is getting in your way too much and lastly for 2023 we do have this redesigned seat like I said, I am finding this part of the profile uh, kind of just hitting the back of my bum. I did say at the start that there wasn't a whole lot to do with this bike with the technology and everything on it. With Harley, it's more how it makes you feel whilst riding. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Let's get back on the bike. Here we go then. Last few bits to talk about with this breakout. It's going to be the seat height. I am six foot one and 115 kilos. And the seat height is 665 mil. So it's really short. And as you can tell, both feet easily flat on the floor, really strong bends in the knees. So you can kind of manhandle the weight of that 310 kilos when you're out of stationary. And that's it for the end of this video, guys. If you have enjoyed this video, please make sure you like it. More importantly, subscribe to the channel because there'll be plenty more Harley videos dropping soon. Until the next one, ride safe.